Hey, I'm Pastor John. Welcome to the next level. Uh, I am your pastor from Grace Fellowship in Beattyville, Kentucky. And we're ready to begin our Tuesday Night Live Bible study. Grab your Bibles with me and uh, let's get open into the book of Romans chapter 11. We're going to wrap that up tonight. I know we will. <laughs> Might even get into chapter 12. We don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, definitely going to wrap up chapter 11. And uh, while you grab your Bible, I'm going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God. You are a good God. God, I thank you that you are a healer. I thank you, God, that I am transformed, that you transform your people by the power of your word through revelation. You exalt us. I thank you, God, that through revelation you bring healing, you bring blessing, you bring peace. You bring calm in the midst of the storm. I thank you, God, that you are the God that still does miracles today. Fresh. Every name has to bow to the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that even things that uh, people brought to their to your disciples that they couldn't cure, when Jesus shows up, he cures it. I thank you, God, that Jesus drives out the devil. Jesus drives out enemies. Jesus drives out sickness. Jesus drives out pain. Jesus restores life to the dead. He restores hearing to the deaf. He restores sight to the blind. And I thank you, God, that he causes limbs, legs, and arms, and fingers, and hands to grow back out in Jesus' name. There is nothing too difficult for you. And I celebrate your name tonight, Jesus, in that wonderful, almighty, powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I didn't ask Jesus to do anything, did I? But I know that he's going to change us by the power of his word. That's, what, that's just what happens. Amen. So if you got your Bible, turn it, turn it with me to uh, the book of Romans chapter 11. And uh, we're going to jump in here looking at verse 29. It's a great place to start. It says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. That's in the New American Standard Version of the Bible. But in the King James, it says, without repentance. And so that gives us a, a kind of an entrance into talking about repentance for just a moment, because repentance doesn't just mean that you get forgiveness for your sins. That's forgiveness. Repentance is a Greek word, uh, comes from a Greek word that literally means to turn around and to go in the opposite direction. And so with regard to sin, when we repent of our sin, which is not what this is talking about, but uh, just since we're talking about repentance, um, when we repent from our sin, it doesn't mean that we just say, I'm sorry. It doesn't mean that we just ask for forgiveness. Uh, those things are part of repentance, but the biggest part of repentance is that you turn from those sins and you go in the opposite direction. Amen. And so uh, here in verse 29 where it says, For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance or are irrevocable, uh, it literally means that once God gives you a gift, He's not going to pull it back away from you. He, you're not going to lose it. Um, so once God extends mercy to you, he's not going to withhold mercy. Once God gives you a gift, we can even apply that to the gifts of the Spirit. But once he, uh, once he extends the gift of salvation to you, God is not going to pull it away and say, okay, you, can, you cannot be saved uh, anymore. Uh, as long as we, it, it really he places it within our uh, purview within our responsibility to maintain that, but it's not that he would ever pull it away. It's that sometimes people walk away from that gift of God. You know, the Bible says back a few chapters in Romans chapter 8, uh, what can separate us from the love of God? And it gives us a little bit of a list of things that uh, the Apostle Paul writes there in the book of Romans toward the end of the chapter in chapter 8. But, um, you know, what I've experienced is that um, you know, even though those things that the Apostle Paul lists, and I'm just going to go, I'm going to go read that because I can't quote it and I feel like I need to mention it. But uh, who will separate us? Is Romans chapter 8 verse 35 says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? <clears throat> Just as it is written, for your sakes we're being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we, oh, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. 
Um, so, you know, none of those things can separate us from the love of God. Jumping back to Romans chapter uh, 11. Um, but in my experience, as I began to say, is that uh, in my experience, what I've experienced is that people can separate themselves. You know, none of those other things can separate you. If your heart is fixed and if your mind is fixed and focused on staying with God and honoring God and embracing that covenant relationship with God, then nothing, there is nothing that exists that, that can separate you from the love of God. The only thing that can separate you from God's love is you. And that's if you decide, if you quit, if you give up, if you walk away, if you repent, turn the other direction and go in the opposite direction. So that word repent can apply to turning away from your sin and going in the way that is God's will, his plan, his purpose is, is designed for your life. But it can also, we can do, apply that to people that backslide, people that walk away from God. Well, they've repented in their relationship with God. They've repented of that relationship when they've turned their back on God and walked away. So nothing can separate you from God's love except you. And so don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Let me talk you down a little bit. Don't do it. Don't separate yourself from the love of God. But uh, again, in verse 29 of Romans chapter 11, it says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. When God gives you a gift and when he calls you. And I know we talked about this a couple weeks ago. But I just wanted to jump in at some point and give a little bit of a refresher and a little running start into uh, finishing up this chapter tonight. But when God gives you a gift, he's not going to take it away. And when he calls you, he's not going to take that away. You know, the Bible says somewhere else that many are called, but few are chosen. It says in another place that we are all called disciples. So, uh, if you are a believer, you are called. You are called, right? That's not, that's not the end of it, though. God's not going to take that calling away. Uh, if you press in to know him, you know, as the Bible says in the, the book of, uh, I believe it's Hosea chapter 6, verse 3, if we press on to know him, then uh, we can actually become chosen, right? We are chosen. We are a chosen generation, um, and a royal priesthood, a holy nation, right? And so um, when we press on to know God, when we press on in prayer, when we press on in uh, praise, when we press on in our study of the Word of God, when we press through uh, resistance, when we press through uh, things that stand between us and the presence of God, when we press through those things and we enter into His presence, when we press on to know Him, then we find that not only are we called, but we're also chosen. And God will never take that calling from you. He'll never pull it back away from you. So verse 30, let's move on. Uh, For just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience. And remember, he's, he's contrasting the Gentiles with the Jews. He's contrasting the nation of Israel with everybody else. And uh, this is what he's talking about, that uh, because of their disobedience, we've been shown mercy. So these also now have been disobedient, that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. So, you know, that's God's overriding, uh, his, his desire is not to uh, put people under judgment. His overriding uh, plan is, is not to condemn anybody. His overriding plan is even when people have uh, turned away from him and walked away, walked in the opposite direction, his overriding plan is still to bring them back to the place of mercy. Okay, so verse 31, so these also now have been disobedient that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that he may show mercy to all. All right. And uh, I think that's probably where we left off last time we were talking in Romans chapter 11. It's going to be a short night. I just feel like it's going to be a short night tonight. I know I said that Sunday morning in church, <laughs> and it wasn't. It wasn't a short message Sunday morning. It was about as long as they ever are. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, my heart was right. Amen. 
<laughs> my heart was in the right place and trying to let you out a little bit early. I do think we're going to uh, let you out a little bit early tonight on the Bible study and uh, let you enjoy some time with your, your family or time to catch up on uh, whatever, you know, whatever it is you have to do. Um, you know, read the Bible, you know, get put on some worship music and praise God for a little while. And that that'll be great. That is excellent medicine. <laughs> I'll just say that. But verse 33 here in Romans chapter 11 says, Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. All right. So I believe it was uh, E.W. Kenyon that wrote uh, a book, two kinds of, uh, he wrote a few books, two kinds of this, two kinds of that, two kinds of righteousness. Uh, I think he, uh, he wrote, uh, Oh, I don't know if this, I don't, I don't even know if I'm saying the right thing, but uh, two kinds of knowledge. Uh, I think that was one of the books that he wrote. It says, oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and the knowledge of God. So there is a knowledge that is talked about in the epistles that says, um, knowledge puffs up, right? Uh, the spirit edifies, knowledge puffs up. But uh, there is a wisdom, wisdom, and let me, let me just share just for a moment uh, the difference between wisdom and knowledge. So um, knowledge, we'll start with that one because that's probably uh, easier to understand. Knowledge, we, we could say just in its sim most simplistic form is just knowing something. Okay, I know, uh, I, I know that I'm going to be done by, uh, say, 7.30. You know, I, I know that. I have that knowledge, you know. Um, so that's probably not a good example because who knows? I may not, I may not be done by 730. <laughs> Amen. But uh, let's say I know that the sun is going to rise tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so that, that's knowledge. What is that knowledge based on? Well, it's based on science. It's also based on the word of God that, you know, as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time harvest, hot and cold, summer and winter. You know, the the, the earth is set on its circumference and um, it's just, a, it's a cycle. I, I know that also by experience. So for uh, 55 plus years, almost 56 years, let me see. Mm, yeah, almost 56 years. <clears throat> Sometimes I have to stop and think, you know, what year was I born in? And, uh, and in order to figure out how old I am, I just kind of don't even think about that very much. But um so for for almost for almost uh 56 years every day every day of my life the sun has come up so it's experiential knowledge so i have knowledge based on science i have knowledge based on revelation from the word i have knowledge based on personal experience so you can say i pretty well know that tomorrow uh, i can predict that tomorrow the sun is going to come up now it might be cloudy it might be an overcast day you might not be able to look up and and see the sun but the sun will rise, right? And, um, you know, nobody's going to argue that point unless you get somebody that's really going to argue and say, well, the sun really just stays in, in one place. It's the Earth's rotation that causes the sun to look like it's going to... Yes, technically, technically, that's correct, <laughs> okay? But for the sake of illustration, we're talking about the sun rising, okay? And uh, sunrise, as the meteorologist would say, well, sunrise tomorrow will be at whatever time it's going to be. Uh, so that's knowledge. That is knowledge. Here is uh, here's something else. So if talking about meteorologists, if you're watching the weather forecast and you're watching the radar and you can see that rain is coming in, it's going to be raining in the morning when you wake up, when you get up, take a shower, get dressed or whatever, and, uh, and get ready to go out to start your day or go out to go to work or whatever it is that you do, then knowledge would say okay according to this according to the radar according to the forecast according to the meteorologist according to what they say according to all of these things it's going to be raining tomorrow when i leave the house and so that's knowledge that that's another form of knowledge so now we'll transition over to wisdom here is what wisdom is wisdom takes the knowledge that's available to you and it puts a plan in place on how to use that knowledge for the greatest good or the greatest benefit. 
So if I know that uh, it's going to be raining tomorrow when I get up and when I uh, leave the house to go to work, then I might, I might have to pick a particular pair of shoes to wear that I don't mind getting wet. I might have to grab the umbrella on my way out the door so that I can use an umbrella between the house and the car, or between the car and, and the office when, when I get there. Uh, I may plan on taking a different route to work because I know that some of the roads get water covered pretty easily on the route that I normally take. I might plan on driving a little bit slower, so I might plan on leaving the house a little bit earlier. All of these things could be considered wisdom because it's, it's um, decisions that are based on the knowledge that you have. And this, I'm just talking about natural wisdom, okay? So that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is I just know something. Wisdom is this is what I'm going to do about what I know, all right? And so uh, there's a natural wisdom, there's a natural knowledge, but there's also a spiritual knowledge and a spiritual wisdom, Okay, so uh, it's so easy to understand why if we know it's going to be raining, then we're going to pack an umbrella, we're going to wear our rubber shoes, we're going to take a little bit of extra time to get where we're going. Um, so that's so easy to understand in the natural, that would be natural wisdom. You know, we're not going to drive as fast on the road as we normally would because the roads will be wet, traffic will be moving slower, visibility will be lower. I mean, all of these things are factors that we know and so they're going to cause us to make a particular decision and that's wisdom okay to change things and to do things differently so that's only the natural so if we apply that over in the spirit and let's just say that i know that i know that if i spend time praying in the holy spirit if i spend time um, digging and studying in the Word of God. If I spend time investing my time and pouring myself into these things, if I lift my hands and I put my heart, my focus, and my attention on God, on the, on the Holy Spirit, and I begin to worship the Lord, then I know when I do those things, I know I have a spiritual knowledge, uh, and it's based on the Word because in the book of Psalm. Psalm 22, right? Doesn't it say that he inhabits the praises of Israel? He inhabits the praises of his people. And so if I praise him, I know from spiritual, from uh, biblical revelation that uh, I can expect to feel or experience the presence of God. Okay. And because I've done that so much in the past, I also have experiential knowledge of that. So I can know it. And, you know, whether it's I've, I've experienced that at church, or I've experienced that at home, I've experienced that in the car, I've experienced that uh, in a number of different places. It doesn't matter what the place is necessarily. It just matters uh, that you, you go through the activity or the actions of praise with the heart that is connected in that activity. And then you can experience the release of the presence of God in your life. That's knowledge. I can know that. I can know that from uh, starting right now, right here. I can know that right here, all the way up until the time that I leave this planet and go to heaven. But if I never practice it, if I never put it into practice, guess what? I'm not ever going to experience that level of the presence of God in my life. Even though I know it, I have spiritual knowledge of it, I have revelation knowledge of it from the word. I've got experiential knowledge, but if I never, if I decide to never do that again, never lift my hands in praise, never open my mouth in praise to God, never uh, fix my heart in praise in connection with God, then I may never experience the presence of God again in my life. Wisdom says if you know it, then it behooves you or it, it moves you to take action on what you know, okay? <clears throat> um, so many examples are, are flooding into my mind right now. Uh, if you know, if you know that, um, the, that disciples lay hands on the sick 
and the sick will recover. Uh, if you know that, you've seen it happen, you've read it in the Bible, you have knowledge of it, you've got spiritual knowledge of it. But if you never take it upon yourself to lay hands on the sick, to pray, to command healing, if you, if you never do it, you're not applying wisdom. You're just, you're just existing with knowledge, right? You're not applying wisdom. And so you're not going to experience the exhilarating joy and the elation of having the Holy Spirit, uh, having Jesus heal another person through you because you have been satisfied with just knowledge and you have not applied yourself in wisdom to do something about the knowledge that you have. Okay, does that make sense? So this is something that we really should be applying to so much of the word. So much of the word is, uh, is not experienced because we know it. We can quote it chapter and verse. Uh, we know so-and-so's preached about it and they've taught it over here. And, and uh, I have no, no preachers on TV or on the internet that are doing it. But for me, if all I do is let it remain knowledge, even if it's not even head knowledge, maybe it's even spiritual knowledge, but I don't activate that knowledge in my life by applying wisdom to it. Wisdom means based on that knowledge I have, I'm formulating a plan that uh, goes along with that knowledge and I'm going to base my actions on the knowledge I have and those, and those decisions, those actions are wisdom. Okay. So let's see where else we will go from here. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. So listen, you know, uh, if you want if you want the word of god to open up to you if you want to if you want to read the bible and understand it more if you want to have greater revelation if you want to have uh, god begin to speak to you through the holy spirit uh, to reveal the word to reveal scripture to you in a way that you've never experienced before then listen this is a key um, god is not really prone to uh, reveal things to a person who is just going to retain it up here in their knowledge container. But he's more prone to reveal his word to people who are going to receive the knowledge and then convert it into wisdom by acting on what they receive. Okay, so um, if you want greater revelation, then here is the challenge tonight act on the revelation that you have if you want to receive greater knowledge greater if you want to walk in a greater level of wisdom then start acting on the knowledge start acting on the revelation that you have now okay what is what did jesus say in the gospels he said um he that is faithful with little shall be given much. That's not just talking about money. Um, that's that applies really. It applies to so many things. It applies to everything. Uh, it applies definitely. It applies to revelation knowledge. If you are faithful with the knowledge that God gives you, which means that you convert that with wisdom into action, then more will be given to you amen do you remember uh when jesus is talking about the talents and the the three servants that were given the talents and one went and buried his talent in the earth and then when his master came back he said i knew i, I knew you were a hard man and you reap where you don't sow and so i took your talent i was afraid basically what he was saying is i was afraid to to take it and and put it to use because i didn't want to lose it well, what ended up happening? He ended up, uh, his fear became manifest because he did end up losing it. The master took it away from him. He called him an unfaithful uh, and unprofitable servant, okay? 
you are not a profitable servant until you take what has been given to you, convert it into wisdom by applying it to your decisions and to the actions of your life and causing that to multiply. God gives you things. God gives you knowledge. He gives you the ability to walk in wisdom. He gives you these things to bring about multiplication in your life. This is so rich. Oh my goodness. I had no idea we were going to get into this right now tonight, but this is, this is just really good. It's good, 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 good stuff. So listen, how do you become a different kind of Christian? How do you grow in your walk with God? This is exactly how you do it. You, you receive knowledge from God. You apply wisdom to it, which drives your actions, your behavior, your speech. All of these things are influenced by that knowledge converted with wisdom into action. And that's how you grow. That's how you become a, a world-changing, earth-shaking disciple of God. That's how it happens. That's how you do it. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable, unfathomable, <laughs> easy for me to say, unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind, knowledge, right, of the Lord, or who became his counselor? Or who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again? Well, we know the answer to that. You know, God, we don't, we don't have anything to give him unless he gives it to us first. Um, verse 36. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 And we made it. It's not quite 730 yet. And we just wrapped up Romans chapter 11. Wasn't that good though? Wasn't that amazing? God just never ceases to amaze me by revealing his word, by revealing truth to us uh, from his word. I love it. I love God so much. I love the fact that he loves you enough to reveal his word to you so that you can experience a life change in your life and in the lives of those that you love and care about. So listen, let me pray for you real quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh glory, hallelujah, I thank you God for changing the life of my brother and sister watching this right now. Change their life by your word, God. Cause them to grow and to develop into that life-changing, world-changing, earth-shaking disciple of God by acting on the knowledge that you reveal to them. And I give you thanks for that, Lord. I thank you that they walk in divine health. I thank you, Lord, that they walk in blessing and prosperity. I thank you, God, that they walk in supernatural peace, regardless of what's going on or happening in their lives. Peace be upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want to invite you to our church service Sunday morning in Beattyville, Kentucky. If you're in the area, uh, come out and join us. We are meeting at, uh, well, our church is located at 1925 Highway 11 South. I just want, I don't want to say that we're meeting at some place because it sounds like it's a temporary thing. But no, our, our church is at 1925 Highway 11 South in Beattyville, Kentucky. And uh, we just, we love God. We're, we let him move there and he's moving powerfully. We'd love for you to experience the move of God there with us. So come on out Sunday morning at 1030 at Grace Fellowship in Beattyville. Until next time, I'm Pastor John. Welcome to the next level.